Clara, you and Joe were very active in recruiting, at least uh, Stewie, I'm sure, Courtney as well. Can you just talk about, I mean, last year I think you guys had dinner in L.A. and then you were part of the group that went to uh, recruit her in Turkey. Just what it was like to be an active participant in this whole uh, getting this team together. Well, I feel that it's really not, you know, it, it's, it's essential to my role as governor. Uh, to really uh, promote why New York is an incredible destination for free agents. Um, I think that it's the job of Jonathan and his team, but it's not only the job of JK, it's really a job of mine and also top to bottom everyone in our organization. So it was really important for me to do everything I could uh, to let them know that I was committed to not only to them, but really the growth of the league. Hi, Clara. Alexa Philip with ESPN. We heard Stewie and Salute talk about the importance of moving the needle forward with off-the-court things in the league, such as chartering. So where do you see your role in helping propel that moving forward? Mm -hmm. I just need to be a constant voice um, and be as influential as I can. Um, as we know, I, you know, I'll get fined if I talk too much about anything related to the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, everyone knows uh, where we stand on this issue, and I alluded to it earlier anyway in my remarks. Um, but I do believe that it's now enough of a topic um, within the league and several other governors that um, it is going to be addressed um, by the commissioner. Uh, um, Ross Steinberg from Boardroom. Uh, kind of piggybacking off of that question, Clara, you um, knowing that you have certain limitations with what you can and can't promise as far as you know the, the CBA and, and what the league imposes on you. What sort of um, what sort of message were you able to send both Stewie and Sloop when this topic came up, um, and how did you um, kind of pitch that you would move forward on issues like chartering flights or, or whatever their concerns may be? Um. I think that the fine we took and the actions that we made pretty much spoke for themselves. And I'm a person that is about actions um, and not words. Um, but yes, I think um, it was, you know, actually, I, you know, we spent three days together um, in Turkey. So we had a lot of time really to talk about a lot of things. And hopefully, um, you know, they, they, they understood that it really isn't just this one issue, but it's a number of things that we're moving forward. Um, and that's what I was hoping to convey um, to them during this um, recruiting period. Hi, Sandy. Owen Pence with a Windsider and Nets Republic. Did you ever dream you'd be able to coach a roster this good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christmas came in February. Um, look, I think any coach, you, you want, always want to coach the best, and we're all about winning. Um, so for Stewie and, and Courtney and JJ to, to want to come to New York, I mean, that says a lot. Of, not about, obviously, the coaching staff, which I think is, is, is really good, and, but also our front office and our owners who, are, who want to be the best organisation in the WNBA. But, uh, you know, the girls have spoken about it. Yeah, we've got these players who are amazing players, but now the, the real work starts. You know, you can't start. We want to win a championship and bring that first championship to, um, you know, to the Liberty. And um, but it, there's a process as well too, and that's what really excites me is just how all the pieces work together. And uh, we talked about making sacrifices, but it, it's you know their games. You're still going to see the best of them, and it's up to the coaches to put them in the best position so we can have success. And you know, we'll, we'll have to have a, a growth period for sure because a lot of players you can't just put them on the court and say go play. Um, but that, that's, that's what I love and um, can't wait to get to work. Hi, good morning everybody. Brian Florence and from Nets Daily. This one's for Sandy. Um, with the season expanding out to 40 games, just how important is it just to have that extra time so players can develop that chemistry and you don't have a situation where you put too much stress and onus on one particular player to sort of manage everything out? Yeah, uh, look, I think, I think it's good. I think playing more games is great for the league. Um, um, but I, I look forward for a training camp. Uh, I look back for my first year in New York last year and we had so many injuries that some days I had five players. So I had to use the first month of, of the season to 
have training camp and develop that chemistry and learn a new system. It's, it wasn't just the new players, it was a new coach and how we want to play. And um, You know, my husband, Olaf, he's on staff, he's coached uh, Courtney before and obviously I've coached against a lot of these players for so long. And um, But, you know, it, it will take time, but I think it won't take as, as much time as what everyone probably thinks because of the kind of people they are. I mean, number one kind of players, but that how they go about doing their things. You know, um, they're very unselfish, um, but we want to make sure we're playing in an entertaining way at both ends of the floor. And I think we're just going to continue to grow the more we get used to each other. And I think that's as a coach, that's, that's what you want. And as the players... Um, you yeah, know, they alluded to it. I, we've all won championships in the WNBA. We know they're extremely hard to win. Um, my first year in, the, in Phoenix, I had a, you could say it was a super team, um, but they had failed the year before. And, and it wasn't just about me. It was just putting, uh, coming in with a, a good game plan and uh, making sure everybody understands and accepts their roles. Um, and, but without the buy-in from the players, we wouldn't have won. So you hear what they say, they're about winning, they understand. It takes everyone buying in to be the best team we can be. Uh, that will be the journey and that's what really excites me. Having a, a very positive culture is important for me. Uh, uh, so yeah, I said that word again, culture. Uh, and we'll continue to grow that. But, and make it, I want them to look back and you know, hopefully the ultimate goal is to win, but to say this is one of the best experiences I've ever had. Um, so... Let's hopefully we can achieve that, not one year, but for multiple years. We're going to go to Zoom next. Holly Rowe. Oh, I have a question for Clara. I, mean, I know that you guys had met with Stewie before uh, last year, which was pretty gen and then again. How did you guys finally get her, and what was important about that? How did we... How did we get her? <laughs> <laughs> That's a question for Stewie. Yeah. Um, look... We, you know, we, we want to be championship contenders. We have some unfinished business to take care of, uh, this franchise. And we knew that in order to be championship contenders, we really had to go out and be aggressive and be attractive to the top talent in the league. Um, so that's why we put a lot of time and effort into trying to communicate what we're, what we're about. And, you know, I th Hopefully, you know, it's the investment we've made um, in the facilities, in the locker rooms, playing at Barclays. Um, hopefully all of those things stood out and spoke to the players. But, you know, it's always our intention to, you know, absolutely, we, we, we want to have a super team. Um, we, you know, we want to create an incredible rivalry with the West. We're ready for it. I think, I think we're kind of, we're excited by it. I mean, that's what, that's what makes us, I think that's what it was going to make us work really hard and get up in the morning, um, is to be able to beat that team in the West. So, um, yeah, um, what did it take? I don't know. I think it just, it was really this alignment of the vision and trying to communicate my vision, and, um, and I'm glad that they felt the same way. And then I have one other question just about since you've signed and Courtney and, and John Quell and this team is coming together, what's been the impact on ticket sales and the buzz and maybe merchandise and just what business impact have you seen already? It's been incredible. I think already our season ticket sales this time last year were, were up by over 54, 55%. And this is only just the beginning of us being able to market them. So um, I think this is the best reason to to buy season tickets because it's going to be an incredible, every game is going to be a, a show. And so I think um, that's exactly what we need. And so far the results are um, tracking with what um, you know, we're expecting to see continue. Hi, uh, all the way to your right. Uh, this is for any one of you three, but uh, Claire, at the beginning of the statement, uh, of this press conference, you mentioned player health and making sure that you guys are doing that well. And um, Brianna and Gordon, you both mentioned kind of, I think, moving the needle off the court. Uh, I know you don't want to talk the CBA and charter and flights and all that stuff, but what tangible things can you guys do to improve player health to make it a more, uh, you know, hospitable work environment and what do you have planned in that vein and, and talked about during the recruiting uh, to make it happen over the course of next, next year? Well, um, JK can speak more specifically yeah. to the investments we've made in the performance team, but we started that last year, um, was adding um, significant resources to 
uh, performance, and that's uh, not only for mental health and wellness, but also for uh, recovery. Uh, do you want to speak more specifically yeah, to it? Yeah, absolutely. That, I think one of the most neglected areas in this league for a long time is player health. Um, especially when you have players going overseas, they're coming back, we have a camp, and they're all in various states of condition. Um, and I don't think it's talked about enough. And so for us, we have to, and, and we say it when we're going out and hiring these really elite people on the performance side, um, we don't want to just have the best performance team in the WNBA. We want to have the best performance team, period. And that's what we're committed to doing, because that's what these players deserve. Yeah, I mean, look, we're via, via the investment from ownership, we're, we're going actively out to hire people that probably cost a lot, but they're the best at what they do, and we're bringing them here. And I think Stewie said this earlier, like all of us just want to get better every single day. That's what we want to do, and I mean it. And so that's making sure we're going out and bringing the most elite people and the most skilled people at what they do, especially when it comes to player health to here to New York. Um, and I think this is a pretty attractive place to come work at this point. Hi, Jonathan and Sandy. This is a question for both of you. Um, people are beginning to define this new era of not only Liberty basketball, but the WNBA as sort of this super team era. But I think what I want to know from both of you is what is, I guess, a way to describe this new era besides using that super team moniker? Um. If you think back a few years, I think Minnesota Lynx had a bit of a super team, didn't they? Yeah. I think there's been super teams all throughout the WNBA. Um, but look, I think it's great. Look, it really does. We're trying to elevate the level. Uh, we're trying to, to promote our game and create those rivalries. I think that's great for the WNBA. Um, you know, it, hopefully more fans can come and watch us and we're like selling it. We're going global. We're not just thinking about just America. I think about going global and getting the best players and in, you know, one team. We think we got some pretty special players, but, you know, Vegas got some special players. And But for us, yeah, we're just focused on being the best team that we can be and hopefully that uh, ends in the goal that we've set out for ourselves. Um, but, you know... I, I, like I said, I don't think it, the super team, everyone's put an emphasis on that. Yeah, it's a super team, but there's been super teams before. I had one in Phoenix. I won a championship. It was great. You know, um, it's good because we all want to win. Um, and, and that's the goal. And, and, but it's, you know, obviously not about the players. They've sacrificed it, things to come here, but it's about the organisation, why they wanted to come here. And that excites us. And, you know, hopefully we'll continue, continue to grow the league. Yeah, I think also, we, like you said, we just want to push this league. Like, we want this to be the absolute best. And I think, look, look at the coverage that's been going on the past week or so. It's incredible. I haven't seen anything like it, to be honest. And we want to have the best players in the biggest market. And then from there, we're going to push the needle. And, and I think, I really believe, like they alluded to, the show on the court. I think we're just going to have really high-quality basketball, night in and night out. And that's something that people are going to want to pay attention to.